How's it going everyone? Well, I haven't done a ratchet video in a while, and I was staring at this case in my room. This is a vintage snap-on case I found online, which I really like. I'm gonna restore it eventually. And I've got some of the ratchets that I eventually want to restore in here. And I figured, you know what? Let's uh, do a ratchet video. Now, got a few options in here. These are some snap-on midgets, as they're called. If you guys can see that. Yeah, the midget. Um, this is the M70 model. This camera will focus. Um, and then this is also another midget, but this is a industrial finish one. We'll talk about that maybe in a different video. Today though, I'm thinking, let's go with this guy. This, yeah, let's do this guy. So what is this? This is a plum quarter inch ratchet. And uh, this, this is a really, really pretty ratchet, actually. In terms of all the tools I have, this is probably my favorite just in terms of looks. Haven't done a rebuild on it yet. It doesn't really need one too bad. I mean, it clicks pretty well. And the finish, I mean, for being a, what, almost 80, 90 year old ratchet, this is, this is pretty impressive. But I've never taken it apart, lubricated it, you know, done anything like that. So maybe I'll just do that today. Yeah, I'll take this apart, see what it looks like inside, re-lubricate it. I'll give you guys a little bit of a history on the plum ratchet. So yeah, let's uh, let's do this guy. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Now, before I dive into the rebuild of the ratchet, uh, which will involve me taking apart the head, relubricating the anvil and the gears, and potentially the two uh, little pawls under here, before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the history of the plum tool line, which is really rather fascinating. So if you look here, you'll see that name here is prominently on the uh, on the handle here. Uh, plum is PL, and this is a downwards triangle, but it's supposed to be an O. It used to be an O, actually. Uh, MB. This actually was part of the reason that Plum Tools, this tool brand, eventually eventually became known as Proto Tools, which many of you may have heard of before. That happened, I believe, in 1948. There was actually another Plum Tools, P-L-U-M-B, from, I believe, Pennsylvania, and the, uh, the owner of that company sued Alphonse Plum, who was the creator of this tool company, uh, started in LA and Los Angeles in 1907, uh, I believe, you know, back when things were actually made on the West Coast, not just bought by people on the West Coast. And, uh, and so he never bothered to register the name Plum under his name. And then the other guy came about a little bit later on in Pennsylvania and created Plum with a U. And then he sued the original Plum. And that is what kind of forced the change to Proto Tools. There was a little bit of an in-between period when both were allowed, and then they changed fully to Proto, then Proto was bought by Ingersoll Rand. Uh, there's a whole kind of convoluted history. But ultimately, this is what we would nowadays call Proto. Now, like I said, Plum was started in LA in 1907, uh, and dates were not really a part of the Plum tool line. They didn't have a very obvious date codes. Now, some experts have gone back and tried to figure out what these numbers represent for date codes, but what they've concluded is uh, there's no full conclusion for exact date codes. They can kind of figure out years more based on the logo. So this one here with the two plum bobs, which kind of is a play on the name plum, right? The plum bobs over here, and the pebble handle, which is really the most interesting part of this, of this ratchet, is the pebble handle. I don't know if you guys can see that. If I can get the camera to focus. But if you zoom in, you can really see this really cool texture, what they call the pebble handle. Um, this was actually originally created or built by other tool companies for the Plum Company. It's unclear who made the design first, but they were branded as Plum. And then once World War II ended, Plum started making these themselves. Uh, with the pebble handles. It was supposedly kind of an early version of a non-slip grip handle. If you guys look at a lot of other older ratchets, they're very smooth, right? And so this was kind of an early idea of a non-slip grip handle, which I think just looks, I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful, this pebble, um, pebble handle, pebble grip. Now, based on the, what it says here, 
I'll, I'll put this up on the screen so you can see the, the kind of chart I have here. Based on my research, this was most likely a, 19, a late 1939 model um, plum tool, at least based on this on the back. Although again, it's a little bit more complicated because the pebble handles weren't made by plum right away. Right, they're made by someone else for Plum, so it's possible this was either made earlier or later. Uh, this is definitely before 1948 because that's when they changed to the Proto logo. So this was either done in 1939, as the handle would suggest here, and again I'll show you guys that on the screen, or it was between 1945 and 1948 before they switched to Proto, but after they started making these Plum tool, uh, pebble handle Plum tools themselves. So I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I'm going to say late 39, just based on this logo, because that's kind of what it seems to be. But either way, it's an old ratchet, and uh, it's, I mean, it's gorgeous. I, I love this thing. So let's, uh, let's dive into it, shall we? Let's go ahead and take this apart and see what we got in here. All right, let's get into this guy here. So we just got two Phillips screws on the back. Those come off. At least the first one came off pretty easy. Let's hope that the second one will prove to be just as easy. Got my little magnetic tray over there. Make sure I don't lose these pieces. Yeah, there we go, nice and easy. All right, so that is now out. And we should be able to just kind of push. There we go, that came out real easy. Okay, so, gotta be careful here because one of the springs wanted to come with Let's take that out. Okay, so here we have the anvil and the teeth on the gear here. Let's see if we've got some focus going, all right. Uh, these teeth look to be in pretty good shape, I would say. Let's see if I can get this camera to focus. There we go. All right, so yeah, these, these look good. Again, this is, if this is a 1939, this is uh, 81 years old, right? No, 91 years old. Jesus Christ, 91 years old. Um, that is, that's pretty cool. No, 81. Man, I can't do math, can I? No, 81 years old. Okay, still, that is very old and very cool. So, okay, let's set that aside. Here is the faceplate. I never really understood why people do owner markings on their tools. I mean, I guess, yeah, people won't steal them, but I mean, you could just steal it and take it home and not bring it back to work, right? I guess, I don't know, that always rubbed me the wrong way, but besides the owner engraving, this was the cleanest um, pebble handle I could find. All right, then inside we have these two paws, one fell out already. This is the one paw, which fits in right here. As you can see, fits in right there. Right there, okay, and so the spring goes there. So this is an interesting uh, paw design. So other ratchets we're using, I got one here actually to show you guys, this style of paw, right? Where you have the ball bearing that fits here, right? And then you, as you click the handle, the ball bearing, which I also have one, right? The ball bearing will then kind of go from one side to the other. And that's what changes the direction of the ratchet. Um, but the plum one I have here uses this sort of double paw design. I don't know if that was done for, I don't know what the reason is for that. Um, maybe, can't be cheaper to make because it's more pieces. I wonder if they thought this was, you know, more accurate, you know, provided better rationing mechanism or without having the ball bearing, it's less likely to wear out. I don't know, but it's, it's a cool, interesting uh, mechanism because there is no ball bearing, right? Essentially, this sort of, I guess, cammed piece right there on the end of the pawl serves as the ball bearing, right? And then you have two springs which push the pawl up against the, uh, the teeth, all right, the teeth that are, are there, pushes up against it, and that's what allows it to, to ratchet. So that's, that's cool. All right, so let's take this guy out too. And we got all of our stuff, okay. Beautiful. And that was actually really easy. 
So I think what's next is maybe a little bit of brake cleaner and some Q-tips just to really kind of clean out this inside, get all the old grease out. And then we'll go ahead and re-lubricate and reassemble. And I mean, this thing is, man, for how old this is, that is just really impressive that it's still in this good a condition after 81 years. Cool, cool stuff. All right, let's go, uh, let's go get some cleaning supplies. Get some brake cleaner. Again, don't need a lot here, but just a little bit. Just a little bit to loosen up any sort of gunk that's in there. So let's kind of spray that in there. There we go. And use the Q-tip to just clean off any sort of buildup that's in here. Yeah, you can see there's there's some gunk in there, but it's not too bad. It's pretty clean actually. Really get in there. All right. Now, one thing you will notice about this design is that, uh, like some of the vintage snap-ons I've been doing, the uh, the lever here is peened on, right? So it's peened over here and it comes through on this side. I haven't looked, but I'm almost 100% positive there are no rebuild kits for this. So I'm not going to risk that by, you know, taking apart the lever. It works fine. I can actually lubricate the inside of it based on the design too, which is actually nice. I can lubricate where it slides right there. So I'm not going to mess with taking the lever out. And this is also, again, just to really speak to the kind of craftsmanship of this ratchet. I mean, even the lever is, is kind of has this interesting, almost looks like a seashell texture on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Man, this thing is just, man, this is American manufacturing at its finest. All right, so now we got that nice and clean. Let's get our little paws out and do a little, a little brake clean on those guys as well. Just clean them off. Okay, those look good. The screws are clean already. Let's make sure not to lose any pieces. All right, now it's time for... I, I just had it. Where did I put it? All right, I found my friggin' super loop. I spent 20 minutes looking for that, that thing. And I, for some reason, put it in the box where my screwdrivers are. I guess I was looking for my screwdrivers. Uh, I don't know. I'm not even old, and I feel like I'm getting old. <sighs> All right, let's lube this thing up. So I'm just gonna get a thin layer kind of around the entire thing here, just to make sure that all of the pieces that's probably way more than I need. Just make sure that all the pieces in there are going to have some protection from any rust or corrosion. So I'll do a little bit there. Wipe off the excess. Cool. All right, now I think, let's see, yeah, we'll go put a pawl in and then We'll put the spring in as well. Although it's sticking to me, there we go. I'm just gonna use That's one, and 
end. That goes in there. Okay. All right, that is in now. Set that down for a second. We'll go ahead and go to our anvil. And we'll just lubricate those teeth. Those are still nice and sharp, actually. I wonder if this thing was just not used a lot, but again, for 80 years old, this thing is in really good shape. Okay. And now, Okay, had to get those aligned, and now this should just fit in like this. And there we go. As you can see, I'm turning the lever, and that little cam right there, let's see if I can get a screw right here, if you guys watch that, that rotates and switches from one pole to the other, while the spring keeps tension on the anvil gear teeth. So that's, that's a really cool design. It's not, you know, it's a little fiddly with the two springs. You know, usually the spring and a ratchet is the most annoying thing to put in, and they gave us two to work with. But, I mean, it works. That's what matters, right? So let's just do a little bit more lubricant right there on the assembly. On the pawl, because that's probably going to be the most in need of it. Okay, that looks good. Don't want to overdo it. This stuff will kind of spread out as we rotate it around. Let's put this aside for a second. I want to I want to give this guy a little bit more of a cleaning. So let's do a little more brake clean on there. Get the old toothbrush Okay, and now we can go ahead and place the, the face plate back on, like that. And we got our two screws, one and two. Give these guys a twist. And there we go. Job done. Really rather easy. And this thing is just buttery smooth. That is, let's see. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can get the microphone a little bit better position for you guys to hear. go all done this was really rather simple I'd say um, but I'm glad I got a chance to pull this guy apart and hopefully keep him in use for you know 80 more years 80 more years or whatever and uh, yeah man I'm just really happy with this thing it's pretty if you guys get a chance look on eBay uh, these pebble handles are a little hard to find um, but plum tools used to be considered top of the line 
back in the 1920s and 30s. This was like a, you know, snap-on Mac, Matco level tool brand. And, uh, I mean, they've, they've withstood the test of time, honestly. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more car and ratchet and tool restoration videos. If you guys have a chance, please give me a sub so that I can keep creating some cool content for you guys. And thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next time.